Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cornerstone. My name is Sri, and I'm joined by Rob. How's it going, Rob? Yeah, we're doing all right this week. Okay. Um, this week is interesting, right? We're actually recording for the first time on a Friday. Usually, we record on a uh, you know Wednesday or Thursday or whatever, but we both agree that the topic that we were uh, you know, reflecting on is something that we are going to talk about this is a mystery and I'm going to leave it at that. But today, what are we going to talk about? Because I know you were, uh, you know, starting in Genesis and now you have come to, yeah. I believe, one of the most important verses uh, in Genesis, well, if not in the whole Bible. Yeah, it's, it's such a simple uh, verse or, or part of a verse that um, I think a lot of us can kind of take and run with a little bit. And mm. it's the fact that we are made in the image of God. Uh, mm. Genesis tells us that we are made in the image of God, in his likeness. Yes. And so we know from John chapter 4, 24, I believe, that God is spirit. So he doesn't have a physical body. Mm. And so when we're made in the likeness and image of God, we know God's spirit. But, there's, um, but God created us with his attributes. So you think about the senses, right, um, the, that um, we're able to touch, uh, smell, uh, see, and hear. These are all things that God um, has um, built us with. And to cap all of that off is uh, an intellectual spirit. And, um, and you know how the, the body is made of, or the humans are body, soul, and spirit. And so when we take the things that happen on a spiritual level, that's where we're communing with God. Mm -hmm. So you kind of put all these pieces together. We have our the physical senses, we have uh, intellectual capabilities, we have spiritual capabilities. We're able to, you know, engage and communicate with God, something that animals can't do. You know, they're yeah. alive, yeah. but they're not able to do some of those things. To, yeah. have, to have thoughts, to be able to plan, to be able to... Um, you know, Ray, reason, just, so many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah all, the, all the same, and on and on and on. And so um, you also have another perspective of, of the physical side of things where a lot of people these days are um, just don't feel good about themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? What were you saying about the are you okay day? Yeah, look, yesterday, um, I think September the 10th, right, here in Australia and perhaps on other places too, it's called the Are You Okay Day, where uh, people are encouraged to ask one another, are you okay? And it's also, yesterday was also the World Suicide Prevention Day. And so mental health is a major issue in our world today. And so rightly so, um, it's important for us to be um, asking and looking after one another. And I shared a video yesterday and I shared a message yesterday. And in that, I said, do we really need a day in particular? Shouldn't we be doing this on a regular basis? But the heart of it, the spirit of that whole uh, endeavor is, is the other person doing okay? Our families, friends, loved ones, coworkers. Is there somebody struggling? So it's that on the inside, not just, oh, do you look healthy and are you well? And that, that might be a part of it. But on the inside, we're talking about in your mind, in your spirit. To me, I think that's what the are you okay really is about. I don't know. I don't think the organization and the day itself from the world's perspective stands for that. But when I think about it, that's what I'm thinking about. On the inside, who you are as a person, are you okay? Yeah. No, I never even heard about are you okay day until I saw your video pop up. <laughs> mm. and so, but as usual, when I see your videos and comments, I just delete them. So I had yeah. to look into it a little bit more to get well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it. It's good to be, it's good to be honest. It's good to be honest, Rob. Uh, I can't lie on camera. Come on. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting that um, people, so many people are struggling with, um, with mental, uh, with mental things or depression or uh, anxieties mm. and stress. And I'm not talking about, you know, how you get anxious going to stand in front of a group of people. I'm talking about the one that's at a level where it actually has a physical 
impact yeah. on you. A lot of people will look at that and be like, especially Christians, I think they struggle with this because if they're, if there's some kind of um, thing that they're dealing with from a mental standpoint, um, you know, I think they kind of condemn themselves or they yeah. think that other people are judging them saying, you know, I'm a Christian. I shouldn't be dealing with yeah. anxiety and stress right. and, and different mental disorders and things like that. Um, yeah. But, but the reality of it is, and I'm kind of new to all this too, but I've experienced it is that it has a physical impact. Our bodies mm. are so complex. <laughs> mm. We don't even understand how yeah. powerful our mind is that God has created. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> it, can, it can do some amazing things. And sometimes things just kind of get out of order and you kind of get down this track and um, people find themselves in these states where they, they, they find a hard time finding acceptance, mm. whether it be them themselves accepting the condition that they're in Mm. Or um, accepting the the fact, you know, that they might be looked at differently or talked about differently or judged. Yeah. You know, what kind of Christian are they dealing with anxiety? The Bible says, yeah. you know, don't be anxious. Be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. Yeah. You no, know, you can't just be anxious for nothing. Like, what's That's so hard right. about that? You know? That's right. So now you're placed in this category. Box. Or so you yeah. think. I don't know. I don't know what the – I'm guessing um, – people that don't understand the, the, um, what this, these type of things can bring on people and they kind of broad stroke it into this thing that can just be controlled because they haven't had a problem with it. All right. And so um, I, I think that people can unfairly judge a Christian or anybody else that's going through these things. Yeah, no, uh, look, absolutely. I think yeah, there's misinformation within the Christian circles. For example, there are prosperity, uh, prosperity preachers and other people who might say, oh, you know, but Isaiah says by his stripes, we have been healed. That means we should be healed of everything. That means we should have no disease whatsoever. And I think that's just a very dumb way to look at it. Yeah, pardon the strong words, but I think that's just a very dumb way to look at it as if to say that these so-called prosperity preachers and other Christians who um, misplace those scriptures and misinterpret and misapply those scriptures suddenly think that they have got a full comprehension of how God works and acts and makes all these things work together. And so I think those kind of, that kind of misinformation leads to other Christians hearing these things and going, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, so therefore, if you're having some sort of a mental health issue or if you're struggling this way, but the Bible says this, and but you're going through this, that means, oh, automatically, you must not be a very strong Christian. You just need to pray more. You just need to go to church more. You just need to read the Bible more. And I think that's just a stupid way of handling the problem, to be honest. And unfortunately, it's also counterproductive because now that, that's also going to puff up someone with pride. Whoever's going with it, you know, their pride is going to take a shot because now they have to say that they're weaker in some sense, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's just bad connotations with mental health disorders remember ptsd when guys were coming back from iraq and all that yeah and and having these issues it's only been recently where um where the the military the government's starting to take it serious but it, yeah. i mean it goes back in wars you know as far back as i guess forever since they've been yeah. happening and um but I, I i mean you think like i don't know i think more recently like vietnam and things like that where these guys we're forever going through mental trauma yeah. and, um, and, and it's only now that it's really being, I mean, it's good to see that um, they're start, starting to take it serious. It's yeah. this, this invisible thing That's that right. people are dealing with. And, That's right. and so when you can't see an illness, it's placed in a category yeah. uh, of, of being like something wrong with that person or uh, I'm talking about this is, I'm just saying this is the associations that are made, whether they're fair, or right or not yeah um it, it's it's a hard thing you know well, yeah it, it is and, and then you know coming back to the fact that we are made in the image of god i think first and foremost everyone especially christians and if you are a non-christian and you're listening whether you believe in the god of the bible or jesus that doesn't change the fact that you are made in the image of god and i think that's where 
every person needs to start defining their worth, their value, their identity, made in the image and likeness of God, made with purpose, made with meaning, carefully woven, fearfully and wonderfully made. God, you know, and, I, and I've, I've tried to explain this to some people. It's kind of like knitting. You know how Psalm 139, if I'm not mistaken, you know, woven together, right? Have you ever watched um, nanas, mostly, uh, who are knitting? How focused they are, how careful they are, how observant they are. Now picture the God of the universe, the God of the Bible, weaving us together, creating us with that focus, with that purpose, with that intent. Not an accident, not unwanted, not a monkey, but made in the image and likeness of God. I think that's where every human being should start defining who they are truly. All right. and, a, and a large piece of all of that is the fact that we were made for fellowship with God. He's created us to be in communion with him, to engage with him, with our creator, you know? Mm-hmm. And so those that don't know the one true God and have, um, there's always going to be this, this emptiness, this searching mm-hmm. that about things like, isn't there something more to life than this? You know, and the reality is, yes, there is more to life than this, than, than what you've seen, what you've experienced, the things that you're searching for. He's right there. And he's been there the whole time. And he's, and he's constantly, he, the Holy Spirit is drawing you to the Father. That's, it. That's his job. And yeah. so when you feel that longing for something, it's just a matter of putting your finger on it and, and realizing what that thing is. Yeah. You know, and, and every one of us, if you've given your life to, to Jesus, you know, you've come to that point where you realize, oh, it was there the whole time. And then your eyes just open up and you can, and you see it. That's, so, I mean, people joke, oh, I've seen the light, you know, but yeah. in reality, we've seen the light. Jesus is the Jesus light. Jesus is he's, the light. That's he, right. He is, he's the way. He's, he's the truth and he's the life. That's right. And no one goes, comes to the Father except through him. So Correct. we So we need the Lord Jesus to forgive us of our sins, except yeah. his sacrifice on the cross for our sins so that relationship can be restored with the father, that relationship that's been broken through sin. And so every one of us has sin in our lives. Every single one of us, you and me, everyone watching, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. And so now go back to why we were created in the first place for, for fellowship, yeah. for communion with him, where body, soul, and spirit, remember at the spiritual level is where we long for and we communicate with God. We talk to him in right. prayer. He engages with us. And that's what I think people don't realize. When we say you can have a relationship with God, it's, it's similar. It's a similar in a way that, that you and I have a relationship. We talk to each other. We engage with one another. We pray with one another, things like that. And there's a, a two-way relationship. Because yeah. I think in the, in, from a worldly perspective, it's all one way. It's all yeah. sending those prayers up to heaven. It's all one yeah. way. And there's Maybe he will that. hear. Maybe he will answer. Huh? Maybe he is yeah. there. <laughs> no, that's not but, how it works for us. No. He is there. So we, yeah. So, but, but what about the other side of the, of, of the equation where God speaks to us? Sometimes we need to stop doing this. Stop yapping, right? And, and open up our ears to hear what the Lord has to say. So the yeah. question is, do you have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying? That's right. And, you know, how do you, how do you hear what the Spirit is speaking? I mean, the Bible describes it as a still, small voice of God. He doesn't blare. He doesn't shout. He is not like the, um, you know, the advertising boards and the, the crazy ads that we see on television, he speaks, but ever so quietly, the Holy Spirit speaks and he's reaching out even right now. If you're watching, you're listening, he's reaching out to you right now. The question is, are you slowing down your heart and your mind, who you are on the inside? Are you slowing down from being distracted by all the things in the world, the glitz, the glamour, the pandemic? I don't care what we're talking about. Because when we take our eyes off all of those things and 
in our heart, in our mind, in our spirit, and we call upon the Lord. God, if you're real, if you're there, speak to me. I'm listening. I think a lot of people don't even come to that point, you know. They just assume that if they use their intellect, if they use their smarts, they can read the Bible and they can figure it out and they can understand and they can then know who Jesus is. And that's a lack of humility. That's pride talking. The mm -hmm. self cannot go discover. I cannot look within and find out who God is. That's not how he, how he works. That's not who he is. The Holy Spirit is the one who reveals God to us. And so without that attitude of humility, without that choosing to A, acknowledge that there might be a God in heaven, and B, acknowledging that it is very possible that these Christians, like Robin Shree and many others, who talk about God and the Spirit and God is wanting to have a relationship with you, perhaps they are right. And maybe I should start with those assumptions that God is real and I can have a relationship with him and then maybe listen to that still small voice because I can guarantee you at that moment, you will hear him. I don't know what he's going to say to you, but I'm certain you'll hear him. Now, in order for it to be real, every single one of us has to come to a point, a, a point of decision. Um, because do you know why people will reject the light? because they like darkness more than the light. They want to live in, in their sins. Yeah. They want to you know, continue to live for today, live for themselves. For well, the um, pleasures of this world. Yeah, world, material possessions, things of this world. And they embrace those things, trying to fill that void that we talked about earlier. But it's never going to be found. You, know? yeah. you keep you know, building your earthly kingdom and then all you do is want more. You know, you get a raise at work and then, okay, I can get more stuff now, you know? And then you try to prepare yourself for this. I don't know what you're preparing for. Yeah. The day you die, I mean, when you lose all that stuff, you can't That's take right. it with you. No. Um, but it comes to, I mean, and this is the hardest part, I think, is that we all have to come to the most humble of all points. And that's to acknowledge the fact that we're sinners. Mm. And so... You know, we look at God who is holy and we look at man who is infested with this thing called sin and sin is missing the mark. It's, it's falling short of the goodness of God. And it's, it's, it's all wrapped up in lifestyle pleasures and immorality and things like that, that the Bible clearly says is wrong. Yeah. And if, you know, we're, we are under the guidelines of, of biblical definitions of marriage and relationship and that oneness that takes place there, you know, and um, we're bound to those terms. And, there, and so even though the world has rejected the biblical definition of marriage being between a man and a woman, even though everyone's doing it, even though governments have legalized all different kinds of things, um, and even just the fact that, you know, everyone's doing it. You know, you, yeah. you take a, a couple of these days and they all want to live together before they get married. Yeah. And so, I mean, the, guy, the Bible knows nothing of those things. No. You know? Um, and so we need to reject some of these self-satisfying uh, pleasures, whether it be from a, a physical standpoint or whether it has to do with finances or, or all these other things. We need to reject all of these things and, and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, we, he, he says, you know, we, we bring our sins before him and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's the burden. That's the weight that's on us is yeah. those sins, you know? Yeah. And so when we, and, you know, he, but he's there, he's there to cleanse us and to make us whole and restore that right relationship with God. And you know what he promises this is the best part forgiveness mm. and eternal life with him yeah right eternal life in heaven in that's the presence of the lord jesus and so yeah. that's that's our great hope and, and we hold to that that's what the word of god says mm. that's what that still small voice tells us in the hardest of times in our hearts that yeah. we embrace that hope and we yeah. look forward to that which he has promised
That's right. And, and the beauty of this is that it's not just for eternity. Jesus said, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. You know what? Look around us with the pandemic and all that is going on. I can guarantee you that there are many people who are desperately seeking for peace. And Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. And this is what I shared yesterday. I said, you know what? I have worries. I have anxieties. Um, I've mentioned the uh, contract. Will my QUT contract be renewed? Uh, will the business be surviving another year? How are we going to manage? What about my parents in India? So on and so forth. I would be lying if I said I have no worries. But my worries does not consume me. My worries does not overwhelm me. My worries does not drag me into the depths of despair. Not because of who I am, but because of who Jesus is. His peace is the anchor for my soul from being tossed about left and right. And it comes back to that identity, that image, the worth, the value. I am a child of God. I am made in his image, in his likeness. And therein lies everything that I need to stand on. Not what I make, not what my title is, not the car. My car is a crappy car out in the driveway. I thank God for it. It's not the fanciest car, but it's out there. Um, this house is in mine. It's a rental, but I thank God for it. I am not going to hold on to these things thinking they'll bring me joy and peace and satisfaction. Christ alone through the Holy Spirit is who I stand on, what I stand on. And I think that's what the world needs right now. All the people all over the world needs Jesus right now, today. And I, I just want to touch on one more thing about forgiveness is that there's no sin too great. Mm. And so if you're holding on to some horrible sin or lifestyle that you've been embracing for so long, you know, we can bring those things to the feet of Jesus. Mm. And, um, you know, in him, you will find rest. And, um, you know, we look at Paul who used to persecute and, and kill Christians and, and cause them to blaspheme, you know, to, to sword point, you know, and, um, you know, and God forgave him and look at how he was able to use Paul uh, mm -hmm. since then. So um, again, we come back to that humbling point of, of acknowledging the fact that we're sinners in need of a savior mm -hmm. and embracing and accepting that free gift of forgiveness and eternal life provided through the blood of Jesus Christ. So let's take this time to pray and anyone out there that's watching and would like to just take an opportunity to give their life to Christ. Um, you know, I'll say a prayer and I'll just lead you through this prayer. How about we do it that way this time? And um, it's a, it'll be a, a prayer of salvation. It'll be a prayer of, of taking a stand and saying, today is the day that I'm going to give my life to the Lord Jesus. I'm going to, and from here on out, he will be the Lord of my life. And so not some kind of, magical prayer or anything That's like right. that. That's right. It's important. Salvation. It's not the special words. It's not Rob's uh, prayer for salvation. It's the Holy Spirit who, who alone saves. You know, we're just giving you some words and, and it could be any kind of words, but the focus is Jesus and the means and the way is through the Holy Spirit at work in you. That's it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Faith, you know, um, faith comes from the heart. So, uh, in fact, if you're about to say this prayer, you're probably already saved as it is. So let's just take this opportunity. I'll give that to you. You can, you can write this down. It'll be your spiritual birthday. And let us know if you would. Uh, let Shri or I know. Uh, send, send us a message and let us know uh, that step that you have taken. And I will help get you on your way to um, having a fruitful life continuing. Because um, this is just the beginning. Yeah. All right. So if you want to say that prayer, just repeat it after me. Dear Heavenly Father. I come to you today as a sinner. Please forgive me for all the wrong that I've done. I thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for my sins. And I receive from you today uh, forgiveness. Please fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit and enable me to continue to, to, to begin a life uh, worthy of your calling on me. And I thank you, Lord, for eternal life 
and I pray that um, that uh, this would glorify you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, look, you know, our prayer beyond that is that the Holy Spirit's still small voice has been heard by you and you have responded and therefore said that prayer. And yeah, we would love to hear from you so that not only can we, you know, guide you in some sense, not because we are the great guardians of the faith, none of that. We just want to know that God has done a work in you and we just want to rejoice with you and we just want to help you and perhaps pray for you as well as you start this very important yeah. journey. Let me, let me just piggyback on that. Just, just one more thing. Um, you know, if, if you're in a lifestyle of sin and, and you know those things are there and you're just kind of coming to terms with that now, just know that these things don't, don't just necessarily disappear like that. You know, when I came, first came to Christ, uh, I was a smoker, I was a drinker, I was a partier, I was into all this stuff. And, you know, but, but piece by piece, as God began to mold me and conform me more and more into his likeness, and, um, you know, he reveals those things in your heart. And those things that are wrong, you'll know. You study the word of God, you, you stay in prayer, you engage with him, and he'll reveal those things that need to be removed. And he, yeah. he will give you the power to be able to do that. You can't do it on your own. No. Uh, he no. forgives you and he'll help you remove those things from your life. And then you'll learn and grow and mature in Christ. Yeah. We can't save ourselves, A, and we can't clean ourselves up, B, after we become Christian. It is all through the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you rightly said, spending time in the word, spending time in prayer and spending time in fellowship with other Christians. There is the, the relationship, the relational aspect with God. And when you get into that right relationship with Jesus, he'll help you and you will know. And you will be, your life will be all the more joyful and filled with peace. Not minus troubles, mind you, not at all. <laughs> There will be troubles. In this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but take heart, Jesus has overcome. And with him, now, we now can overcome. I just said, uh, now, I just said that God started cleaning up things in my life. I can't explain why Shri is still the same as he was before. But we keep praying for him. and uh, Just and ignore that last him. bit, okay? <laughs> if you're listening, watching, ignore that last bit. All right. Look, I think, I think we've had an excellent discussion today. Uh, thank you as always, Rob. All right. God bless you guys. We'll see you next All time. Right. And see you and thank you for joining us and supporting us. God bless.